Hello and welcome back to Vault Holocron, where today I will explain all Sith artifacts. This will be anything under the Sith artifact tag on Wikipedia. This video will have chapters, so feel free to skip ahead to any artifacts you want to see. First up is Kira's Sith Holocron. A large Sith Holocron acquired and reassembled by Dryden Voss. Voss kept the Holocron in his study, awaiting the best benefactor to give it to. When Voss was killed by Kira, she came to own the Holocron and kept it on the Vermilion, her ship. Next is the Sith Holocron from Malachor. This Holocron contained knowledge on Sith teachings and could power the super weapon in the Sith Temple on Malachor. When Jedi fought the Sith on Malachor, the super weapon was used, killing both the Jedi and the Sith, leaving the Holocron beneath the temple. Later, Maul attempted to get the Holocron, but was unable to enter the temple because he did not have another person. The eighth brother was searching for Maul and the Holocron. When Ahsoka, Kanan and Ezra travelled to Malachor, Ezra became separated from the group and worked with Maul to get the Holocron. Inquisitors arrived and Maul and the Jedi met and agreed to work together to fight the Inquisitors. Maul told Ezra to place the Holocron on the obelisk at the top of the temple. Ezra went to do this and when he got there, the Holocron levitated into position and an ancient Sith called the Presence told him how he had the power to destroy his enemies. Ezra refused to use the weapon and was attacked by Vader. Ahsoka saved Ezra and then Kanan and Ezra worked to remove the Holocron while Ahsoka fended Vader off. Kanan and Ezra managed to remove the Holocron but this caused severe damage to the temple. Kanan and Ezra escaped with the Holocron stranding Ahsoka and Vader on Malachor. Later, Ezra started consulting with the Holocron to learn new fighting techniques and force abilities. When Kanan found out, he took the Holocron and gave it to the Bendu for safekeeping. After Maul took Sabine, Hera, Zeb and Chopper hostage, he demanded to have Ezra, the Sith Holocron and Kanan's Jedi Holocron. Kanan and Ezra obliged and Ezra and Maul worked together to merge the two holocrons in order to see a glimpse of the future. When the holocrons were merged, Maul sought to find hope in the future and Ezra sought out a way to destroy the Sith. They both saw each other's visions, seeing oblivion for Maul's and the twin sons of Tatooine for Ezra's. This let Maul know that Kenobi was still alive. Kanan told Ezra to finish up the process of combining the holocrons and Ezra did causing an explosion that damaged both holocrons. Now for the Sith holocron from Moraband. A large holocron Palpatine found on Moraband. He had it transported to Coruscant for his secret Sith artifact collection. Next up is the ancient Sith runestone, an artifact discovered by the Jedi in the High Republic era. The Jedi took the runestone to the Jedi Temple on Batuu, where it corrupted the Jedi, causing them to fight to the death. Padawan Adi Sun Z was the only survivor. Next is the Ashes of Malachor, which was the ground up bone of Jedi and Sith from the lost planet of Malachor. When eaten, the ashes increased the user's abilities in the dark side due to the dark essence trapped within them, but they removed the user's morality. Now for Darth Atreus' lightsabers, a pair of crossguard lightsabers. When the Sith were at large, Sith Lord Darth Atreus constructed these lightsabers and over time his rage was infused into them. These lightsabers caused the user to go into a frenzy. Not long after the Battle of Yavin, Sarna Staros was hired by the Empire and a crime boss on Hradirik separately to retrieve the lightsabers. She gave one of them one lightsaber and the other the other. This tricked the Empire but not the crime boss. The crime boss demanded to know where the other one was, but was driven into a frenzy by the lightsaber, killing all of his men. At the same time, an Imperial officer presented the other saber to Vader. Vader wanted the lightsabers to give them to Palpatine. Vader found out about the missing lightsaber and killed the officer and went to find the other. 
Luke arrived to the place the crime boss killed his men and picked up the saber. Luke used the saber to attack the stormtroopers that arrived. Afterwards, he deactivated the saber, escaped and destroyed the lightsaber because he didn't like the amount of rage it gave him while using it. Vader, using one saber alongside his lightsaber, hunted down Staros, who set a trap for him. The lightsabers were so powerful, they even clouded Vader's senses. Staros escaped while Vader dealt with the trap. Vader saw Luke leave the planet. Vader decided to destroy the saber he had, because it was too unpredictable. Next up is an ancient Sith ritual altar. A crystal structure on top of a base made of rock or metal. It was pink and black. It was found on Zyost, and Palpatine acquired it for his personal collection. Next is the Great Crystal of Antonai, a Sith artifact Palpatine acquired for his collection in the Clone Wars. Now for the Sith Chalice, an ancient Sith meditation incense burner, which was used by the Sith during some meditation rituals. Palpatine found it on Malachor, and used it as decoration in the Chancellor's Suite of the Senate Office building. Next up is the Sith Holocron Repository, which was a part of Palpatine's personal collection in the Clone Wars. Next is Emperor Palpatine's cane, a walking stick Palpatine used during the time of being Emperor of the Galactic Empire. He didn't need it though. The stick was glossy black and was destroyed with the second Death Star. Now for the Fermenter Cage, a machine designed to freeze time. It was designed by Darth Momin. Momin was defeated before he could properly use it. The machine came to be stored in a temple in the dark side hellscape. Later, Kira sent the archivist to retrieve it and planned to use it to freeze Darth Sidious and Darth Vader with it. She spread a rumor that an ancient Sith was trapped in it to lure Vader and Sidious in. The archivist and a few others worked on getting the cage working and more than once caused a disturbance in the falls which could be felt by Vader and Palpatine. Eventually, they settled on using the Amaxine space station, since they could channel dark side energy from the Drengir of the station to activate the cage. They lured Vader and Palpatine into the trap and activated the machine. Vader and the Emperor used the force to hold off of being frozen, but were losing. Then, the Knights of Ren arrived. They decided that Palpatine and Vader wouldn't stay trapped for long, and so shot the machine, breaking it in hopes of being spared by Palpatine and Vader. Next up is the Hand of Sybarus, a Sith gauntlet kept inside the final protector statue on Jedhar by the Jedi Order. It shared the name of the Sith Lord, Darth Sybarus. In the Battle of Jedhar, a battle between the planets Eram and Erano, Tay Sirik used the gauntlet to kill the Great Leveller a powerful nameless that had the power to overwhelm force users to separate their connection to the force. This use of the gauntlet caused memory loss in Sirik. Next is Exar Kun's lightsaber. This was a double-bladed lightsaber wielded by the ancient Sith, Exar Kun, a former Jedi that led a Sith Empire in around 4000 BBY. Now for Lady Shah's raiment a raiment once owned by Lady Shah. This was offered to Pharos by the archivist to get them to stay and help on activating the fermenter cage. Pharos used it as a cape. Next up is the lightsaber of Darth Noctus, a sickle-bladed lightsaber once owned by the Sith Lord, Darth Noctus. Sith Lord Viceroy Exim Panshard acquired the blade and used it for a time. The lightsaber came to be stored in a bronze box. Years later, the spirit of Panshard influenced Kiza, a female Pantoran, to wield the saber. She used it to fight Luke Skywalker. Next is the Mask of Lord Momin, made and worn by the Sith Lord Momin. This mask came to be kept in the Jedi archives and could control people through the dark side of the Force. After the Jedi Temple was converted into the Imperial Palace, Palpatine gave the mask to Vader. At Mustafar, Vader communed with the mask to design his fortress that would draw energy from Sith caves. Eventually, the mask gave a design that worked and resurrected the Sith Lord Momin. 
Vader killed Momin with a large stone. The mask fell onto the floor and Vader gave it back to Darth Sidious. Sidious kept it on his yacht, the Imperialis, with other artifacts. When Lando and his crew stole the Imperialis, Alexin was corrupted by the mask and attacked his brother. Lando locked both of them in a room and destroyed the Imperialis. Now for the mask of Viceroy X in Panshard. This mask was made from meteorite metal, had lots of small divots hammered in, had black glass eyes, and a line of rivets marking where the mouth is. This mask contained Sith Lord's X in Panshard, or at least the spirit of Panshard. When someone wore the mask, X in Panshard could influence and to some extent control them. Luke Skywalker sees a vision of the mask's production in Shadow of the Sith. In these visions, he sees Exim Panshard as a vicious ruler. Exim Panshard is ordering a blacksmith in one vision. Panshard heats a furnace with Darth Noctis' lightsaber, and then, once the meteorite is hot enough, he presses it against the blacksmith's face, shaping it into a mask using the blacksmith's face as a mold. Luke then sees Exim Panshard in a great hall, wearing the mask. There, Panshard murders everyone with the lightsaber, slicing at them until the whole room is just a pool of blood. Then, Luke sees another vision, in which the soldiers of Panshard round up the people of the town and send them to a machine, designed to kill them. The mass amount of deaths caused by Panshard adds their screams into their life force to the mask, eventually allowing Panshard to overcome death which is how the mask comes to have Panshard within it. Eventually, the mask came into the possession of Kiza, a female Pantoran. Although she tried to fight his influence, Exim Panshard controlled her. Panshard was controlling her to collect pieces of a kyber crystal which could lead the way to Exegol. This is because Panshard wanted to bring himself back to life properly at Exegol. Luke Skywalker found some pieces of the kyber crystal on an archaeology site. Kiza fought Luke for the kyber crystal pieces and eventually died, with the mask being destroyed by Luke Skywalker. Next up is Nier's Gauntlet, which was created by Sith Lord Nier. It was given anonymously to the Jedi Watchmen of the Corbo system. This gauntlet corrupted the Watchmen, to causing him to murder anyone who crossed him in any way. His Jedi companions killed him and sent the gauntlet to Ossus. The gauntlet was lost after the Kron supernova, a supernova caused by Sith Lord Naga Sado that defeated the Jedi on Ossus. Next is the Saber of Darth Krull, a lightsaber owned by the Sith Lord Darth Krull. This lightsaber was kept in the Forbidden Vault of the Jedi Archives. Now for the Screaming Key, the key which unlocked the Fermenter Cage. This key was stolen from Fortress Vader by the Knights of Ren for Lady Kira. Next up is the Sith Forge. This device was used by Albrecht, the Sith Alchemist, to repair Kylo Ren's helmet on Exegol. Next is the Sith Scrolls and Spellbooks, which were ancient Sith texts. Palpatine owned many of these near the end of the Clone Wars. According to the Keldrama epics, stories detailing the Unification Wars and the life of Ulic Keldroma, the text could be translated if someone wore the translation talisman. Now for Spirit Urns, vases affiliated with the Sith. Palpatine kept two at the entrance of his Chancellor's suite. Next up is the translation talisman a device which was worn around the user's neck that allowed the user to read Sith text on scrolls and spellbooks. It had a golden scarab with a Sith glyph on its carapace. Satal Keto found one on Onderon and made a replica for the craft, a group that forcefully took over the Empress Teta system using carbonite thousands of years before the New Republic era. Next up is Unidentified Dark Sculpture, a device that could ground false lightning. Supreme Chancellor Palpatine kept it in his office on Coruscant. Whenever Sidious lashed out with false lightning, the device grounded his lightning so he wouldn't destroy his office. Now for Unidentified Sith Relic, 
a powerful Sith relic which was hidden underground in a Sith temple on Ashas Re. Scholar Mika Gray and the First Order were both after the relic. Mika found it first, but accidentally triggered a booby trap. Kazuda Ziono, CB23, Ela and Kel rescued Gray, and Gray used the relic to destroy Faith and his team working for the First Order. Next up is the Sith Wayfinder, an ancient Sith device of which there were only two. They were made through studying the Pergil, which could naturally travel through hyperspace. The Wayfinders directed the user to the Sith planet of Exegol. After the fall of the Empire, Kylo Ren got one from Mustafar and Rey got one from the second Death Star wreckage. Next is the Sword of Kashun, a sword most likely created by a faction of Dawutin Sith warriors. This faction believed that lightsabers were for weak individuals. The sword allegedly caused the Sith to turn on each other due to it being cursed. Doc Onda hired Dr. Afra to help collect the sword on Moraband, but Dr. Afra and Doc Onda ended up fighting over the sword, with Doc Onda breaking the sword in two while fighting. Doc Onda left with half the sword. Kylo Ren wanted the sword and collected the blade. He sent mercenaries to collect the hilt from Doc Onda. These next two artifacts aren't under the category on Wikipedia, but I feel they belong. Next up is the unidentified bled kyber crystal that could direct the user to Exegol. This kyber crystal doesn't seem to have a page on Wikipedia at all, but it is in the book Shadow of the Sith. In the book, the kyber crystal is shattered into pieces, and Kiza, controlled by Exim Panshard, wants to collect the pieces and use them to locate Exegol. Kiza had some of the pieces, and Luke finds some of the pieces at an archaeology site where a ship crashed, and eventually concludes that the ship was trying to get to Exegol, but crashed because the owner didn't have all of the pieces of the kyber crystal. These kyber crystal pieces are later incorporated into Panshard's mask, which is broken into four by Luke. Now for the Sith Assassin Blade a blade that resonated with the dark side. They were wielded by Sith assassins such as Ochi of Bestoon. The blade interacts with the user and it drains blood from people it's used on, absorbing the blood into the blade. The Sith assassin blade could also direct the user to Sith temples and forgotten treasures. The blade made Ochi feel really good when murdering people and made him want to murder more people. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and bye.